On my last day at the cabin, the sun went down in a blazing myriad of color. But as I left on my travels, this picture of peace and warmth changed to this. It's not looking good. It's getting to be a whiteout. I don't think I'm going to be able to go any further. Although it looks like I was heading north, I was actually headed south. I thought I could get out of uh, Pennsylvania before the snow hit, but I couldn't. I was really hoping it was just going to warm up and turn to rain, but it just didn't happen that way. Don't want to be driving in this, especially since I'm towing a trailer. It makes it a little bit more dangerous. And cars are slowing down as well. Not going to get far. Got to find the nearest exit. It's going to start getting slippery pretty soon. My first two nights were at rest stops amongst the long haulers. And it didn't take long for my truck to be completely caked in road salt. But eventually, the snow did turn to rain. until it all ground to a halt around Roanoke, Virginia. Well, apparently there's a big car crash on I-81. Uh, and <laughs> all traffic has stopped. I actually got off uh, I-81 to uh, route around it. This is the side road and it's just as bad. So uh, looks like it's gonna be dark soon. It's raining, weather is miserable. And I'm stuck between a lot of trucks. Could be worse. By dusk, the traffic was moving again, and I spent a rainy night at another rest stop. But by morning, the sunrise was beautiful, which gave me a lot of hope. And by my third night, I actually made it to a real campground. Well, I made it to Tennessee, and it's a little cold. Uh, and unfortunately, I guess I brought the cold with me from Canada because it's gonna get even colder. Uh, it's supposed to get down to minus 17 Celsius in a couple of days, which is about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, I think it's a little colder. So uh, this is just another stop. I got another day of driving just to get a little warmer. Oh, glad there's hot coffee. Although it was only a couple of days, the break was really appreciated. But soon I was on my way south again, through sweet home Alabama. After close to 2,000 miles of pavement, my tires finally hit pay dirt in Florida. That looks 
looks like I'm here. I was now back in the woods, amongst others, with the same appreciation for fresh air. Oh, yeah. This is so nice. I really needed it. This is the first day in I don't know how long, which I could come out with a t-shirt on and just bask in the sunlight. Oh, I mean, up at the cabin in New Brunswick, it was one storm after another. It was ice, ice cold. And coming through, um, I actually, you know, the reason I haven't had a video for so long is first I was delayed because there is a big, big storm in Pennsylvania. And so I delayed the trip for a few days. And then there was this tiny window of opportunity for me to get down far enough to hit another storm. And, uh, and I've been chasing the cold. This is just the best day ever, I think in the last month, that I can just sit down here, relax, just take in some sun. I love it. Oh, I can feel that vitamin D surging in my system. This is one of my secret spots. Um, there are many that I actually never have done a video on because I wanted them to stay this way. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, they're local places. Uh, a lot of families have taken their kids here, you know, and it's gone on and on for generations. And I think this one was very important to people in the panhandle of Florida. However, it has changed. And I think because of its popularity, and it's unfortunate because uh, a lot of the sites are now fenced off. There's just a very narrow place you can camp and they've segregated uh, the, uh, the RV sites from the camp sites, which is, a, which is okay, I understand that. But there was a whole circle around here you could camp just a few years ago and now it's just a small section. However, it's still here and it is free and I'm not going to give you a lot of information about it, but I will say it's about 45 minutes from Pensacola and uh, it's on the Blackwater River. So do your research if you want to come here, but I'm not going to do a big video on it because I want to make sure it stays here and it's still wonderful for a long time. The campground is nestled amongst a forest of slash pines, a tree native to Florida. They have this unique ability to self-prune their lower branches to minimize the effects of forest fires. Smart tree! Well, I think there's probably at least some people that are curious as to how the truck's doing, because uh, this is the very first trip I've taken with the Chevy truck towing the trailer, because for years I was towing the trailer with a Jeep. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have a little bit of a bet going on that I think I can get better gas mileage with this pickup truck that I can with the Jeep. And the specific bet is this, that I can get better than 15.1 miles per gallon at some point on this trip. 
and I can't cheat. I can't like improve the gas or anything. I can certainly improve my driving. And uh, you know, there's times where the roads are better and there's times when the roads are pretty bad. I have been keeping receipts. And uh, as far as other things, I had no issues whatsoever with like the engine, uh, with the tires, with the steering. It got me down here, no issues. It got me through ice, it got me through snow, it got me through rain, and everything is fine. I mean, yeah, there's that little ticking noise in the engine, but my mechanic said it's not a real issue at this point. However, what about gas mileage? And I've got a lot of receipts here. And to be honest, I was kind of shocked because I was getting some like 10.7 miles per gallon, which is absolutely dreadful. I mean, I know I was going up and down and I was fighting winds and it was cold and it was nasty, but I expected it would never get that bad. And uh, yes, a lot of them were just not very good at all. I think the best ones were like, uh, well, here's one that was, uh, well, 11.4 miles per gallon uh, that's not good that's not even close to 15.1 and you know how they say if something is too good to be true then be a little suspicious well if it's too bad to be true I think you also have to be suspicious and I was very very suspicious so I sort of went did a little digging into what the possible problem could be if there was a problem. Was it the engine or was it something else? I tried to keep the speedometer below 100 kilometers per hour, which is under 60 miles per hour. However, was the speedometer accurate? To find out, I installed a mileage app on my phone. It turns out what I thought was 100 kilometers was incorrect. 100 was more like 107.5. Now because I was going faster than I thought I was, I was actually using more gas. And the other bad thing was if I thought I was going the speed limit, I was actually going over it. So along with paying for more gas, I'd probably have to pay for a speeding ticket or two. Not good. But the other check was the odometer. And sure enough, 100 kilometers was actually 107.1. I was off 7.1%. Was this because I changed my tires and rims? Quite possibly. So I went back into my receipts and I added to all the distances that 7.1%. And of course, the miles per gallon improved. For example, the 10.7 uh, miles per gallon was now 11.4. Not fantastic, but it wasn't as dreadful as I thought it was. Uh, so at this point, and, it, and I've only been driving less than a week, uh, my best mileage was 12.2 and the worst was 11.1. So I haven't conceded yet. I've got a long way to go. Hopefully there'll be some better, better roads. Uh, you know, maybe a nice tailwind would be nice, and certainly if I slow down a little bit. So, I haven't forfeited yet. I'm still in the race. Now is the time to stretch my legs on a local hiking trail. Now, despite its name, I found the Blackwater River everything but black. And even though it was January, the coldest month of the year, there was still lots of color and life in the forest.
just before nightfall, I had an unusual visitor. And it seemed quite attracted to my camper. Not surprising, perhaps, because there is a trailer similar to mine called an armadillo. Hello, little guy. What you looking for? What you looking? You smelling my feet? Do they smell good? Oh, you tickle. Sorry, don't have anything for you. I don't even know what you eat. Ow! You bite. <laughs> I got bit by an armadillo. He likes my feet. Maybe it's the crocs. It's got a croc fetish. Well, the sun's gone down. And it's getting really cold. And even though I'm in Florida, it's gonna be below freezing tonight. And it's gonna get even worse in the next couple of days because there's a polar vortex that's wreaking havoc. I mean, here's a map of the US and that's Florida down there. And anything in deep purple is bad news. It means it's way, way below normal temperatures. And uh, it definitely is. I mean, I'm from Canada, I can expect cold like this, but I didn't think it would be going down this far south. In Nashville right now, it's snowing. So that's where I thought I'd be spending, you know, a little time was in around the Nashville area. But uh, no, not when they said it was going to be minus 17, I headed south to Florida and still the cold is following. It will warm up eventually, but uh, right now, well, I guess I'm going to be using the heater a little bit more and uh, wearing a jacket or two. Hey, I'm used to it. As night closed in, there wasn't a chorus of crickets under that crescent moon. It was a chorus of generators from other campers trying to keep warm. Well, unfortunately, there's no culinary delights tonight because it was my very basic and bland spaghetti and tomato sauce again. But I did want to talk about the Dickinson heater because I really think I've got it down to an art by now. Uh, what I do is I only have it on when it's below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's the temperature it would be like in a tent during the summertime at night. So most people should be able to bear that. And I have a very thick, warm sleeping bag. Um, so uh, right now it's about 10 degrees. I could actually go down to about freezing zero and then turn it on and I'd be happy, but I'm gonna put it on now. Um, always the same kind of deal. You do that and you do that. Shut the door. Give it a few seconds and it's going. I'll just turn that up a little bit. There we go. Works fine. Now, here's what's different. Because I have a, uh, a cooler which takes electricity, I don't want to warm, warm up the cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it without the fan. So it's not using any electricity at all. What it does is it heats up around the bed only. The rest of the camper inside the camper is cooler. And it's cooler, guess where? By the cooler. So the cooler does not turn on in the middle of the night because it's already cool. So I use almost absolutely nothing in electricity at night. So I save my battery, the solar, especially when it's uh, cloudy or you know, it's too cold and there's not a lot of sunlight. And I save propane. Now the second part of this is once I get it to a temperature I am comfortable with, I turn down the flame. Just to a tiny little bit like that. And that should be fine for the rest of the night. And you'd be absolutely amazed at how much propane 
I've got this down to these days. So despite the chilly air, I was comfy, warm, and slept like a baby. Well, I've now been using propane for heating an entire week in the cold, seven nights. How much did I actually use? Well, let's find out. Turn the propane off and then I can disconnect. And by the way, I never use the volume which is here because that's very inaccurate, especially when it gets cold. What I do is I measure the tank by weight and that's why I've got this little scale. So one, two, three, how much does it weigh? Well, it's a little under three quarters full, which I would say is approximately two thirds. So after a week and many nights really cold, how much did I use? a third of the tank. The tank holds just under 20 pounds. So that means for a single night, and sometimes that was like 10 to 12 hours a night, I was using less than a pound of propane. And that's pretty good. And that means that if I keep it using it the same way, even if it's colder, I can still make this work for like almost three weeks. That is really good. It saves a lot of hassle when you don't use a lot of propane. Well, I think that's it. I'm gonna pack up and move on. It's uh, getting a little busy here right now. I wanna find a place that's a little bit more intimate, peaceful. And it's only my first week. I mean, I love the weather here, but it is gonna change. So uh, time to move on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other ones as well. It's only the first week. I got many, many more weeks to come. So please check back. More adventures to follow.